Hi guys, how are you all this afternoon? Good to see you twice today. If you joined us this morning, if you didn't go back and watch this morning's Brother So's Live. Good to see you, Shirley. What else would you like to know about my connection? I think I covered it pretty well this morning, but we there's always more to learn, I'm sure. Um, you all asked last week, hi, Joanne, how are you? Or excuse me, jo Margaret, sorry, <laughs> I read that wrong. <laughs> hi, Margaret, how are you today? How are the chickens? Um, okay, so last week you all asked for different textures of what I've cut with the Scan and Cut with the new Rotary Auto Blade. Um, here are some of them. This is neoprene. And yes, this was all done in my connection. Um, this one is batting. Let's see what else we've got here. Fleece I've got. Um, let's see here. Uh, this is a dense wool. So if you look at this, this is pretty thick. Um, let's see here. What else have we got? <clears throat> so there's your craft felt with nothing done to it. It's just basic, your inexpensive, cheap craft, craft felt. Well, it sounds like somebody just about wrecked a, wrecked a golf cart. This is cotton that hasn't been treated. So it's just a plain cotton that hasn't been treated. This one is a shiny metallic. And this one I did cut on fine mode. Most of them I cut on, um, normal mode, but this one I did cut on fine. This one is crushed velvet. Now this one is really cool. The fact that we can do that, that's, we've, I would have never even tried to put heat applied material on the back of that one to try to cut it. What else have we got? So this is organza and oops, my sequins are kind of flopping. So this is a sequin stretch knit, which is kind of fun to play with. Um, this one I was really impressed with. This is a sweater knit and it did a beautiful job with it. And let's see here. What else have we got? This one is satin that hasn't been treated. Um, plush dots. So this is dotted fabric. Let's see here. What else we got? Um, this is loose wool. So this is a uh, loosely woven wool. It's not a wool felt, but it's a really loosely woven wool. And this is plush fabric. So this has got texture on both sides. Let's see here. What else? Flannel. Um, this one's a poly knit. So this is a stretchy knit. This is another one of those that I would say definitely do that in fine mode. This one is tulle with a print on it. So I actually did a direct cut on that one to have it, it scanned a direct cut. Um, this one is just regular wool, not a dense wool, but just a regular wool felt. Oy. And then lace. So, oops, wrong way. There we go. Lace. So those are the ones that I've cut so far. If there's other ones that you all have questions about, I'll be happy to try them out for you. But those are the ones I've tried so far. So let me come up and start answering questions here before I go on. Um, your 3.30 deer, you've got to turn that on, Sherry, <laughs> and have fun with it. Let's see here. I saw, yes, you, um, so what you want to do is turn on your 3.30D, connect it up to your Canvas Workspace account. That's the first thing that you would do, whether it be the 3.25 or the 3.30D, you need to register it in your Canvas Workspace account. Get that piece of cardboard out, flip it over, and find the code and then take it to the luminaire and register it like I showed you all how to do this morning. There, you're going to use the same playbook. The only thing that's new about this one is the rotary blade, and we're doing plenty of lives with the rotary blade for you to be able to see that in action and my connection. Everything else operates exactly the same way. Let's see here. I know, Rain. Wow, right? Uh, it, it's amazing what you're able to cut. The neoprene was so cool. That's it, any stretchy fabrics were just a pain. You and craft felt. When somebody would come to me, I would just cringe. And now I don't even have to say, have to worry with it. Um, I used low tack for a large portion of them. If they were really stretchy, then I tend to use my standard tack mat. The organza, the um, knits, those I used on my low tack mat. The felt, I can use 
either one. It, you're just going to play around and see which which mat works for you to hold it. If it's a good clean mat, you should do fine with your low tack mat. Just keep those mats nice and in good good order. <laughs> yes, I mean that that is like the book binder. I had to find I had to order something special to be able to carry them. I couldn't find a ring that had that large of a ring for me. So, but they, if you all notice the little, this was, this was all done in my design center. This is um, one of the shapes out of my connection, as is the flower. I used, if you all saw my Instagram or my Facebook, probably the other day, I was projecting this placement, sti these stitches here. I, so I was projecting to see where I wanted my flower to go. And that's how I placed all the flowers, but that's, everything was done through near it was done through my connection this trim here was also a my connection piece so i basically just and i used one of the um decorative one of the motif outlines for that and basically duplicated it a couple of times so there's a a lot of fun in that and a lot of fun to watch so oh yay marcia glad you get to watch us these days yeah, I'm telling you, it does an amazing job. Y'all, I actually even cut terry cloth. But what I'll say with the terry cloth is that it really does need to be a basic shape. So it really depends on what you're doing. Um, and it needed to be on a higher tech mat. But, um, you know, the like, what am I thinking? A, a terry cloth robe uh, or your washcloth material. I actually cut that, but it does need to, those. It needed to be a basic shape. There is not a fabric chart. Um, Brother intended for us to use the low tack mat for everything, but we found that like the dense wools cut better with the standard tack mat. Um, things that are dense and things that are slick, we found that we like a higher tack for just simply to keep that shifting from happening and to keep good contact on the mat. Yeah, um, I I know Stephanie is like, when is that thing going to come in? We've they've got the they've got the um, replacement blades, but none of the rotary auto blades. When I went to St. Louis last week, we had the replacement blades, but we didn't have any of the rotary auto blade kits. Hopefully, those will start arriving soon. I know that some some dealers have gotten them, but not all have yet. It you know it's the great container ships out in the ocean that we that we have to thank for this. Oh well. Oh, you may have to, you have a, may have a new baby turkey coming, huh? Cool beans. Um, the grass that the flower is on, Cindy, I took, um, in the, in the scan and cut, go to the trim section and there's like a rickrack looking one. What I did was I erased the bottom part of it and then I changed the stitch to, I'll show you, I'll, I'll show y'all that when we get done with stuff, so. Um, fine cut. Here's what I, this, the thinner the material, the more delicate it is. And since that blade can't stop on a dime, I tend to use fine cut. If it's a really detailed cut, you want to use fine cut. Um, and if it really must fit something, you want to use fine cut. When you're using things like, um, batting, it, you're not going to notice that it went a little bit too far but you will notice on certain fabrics hold on a second i'll grab one to kind of show you what what will happen y'all get to see me in my scruffies all right so this is the metallic fabric okay let me turn it this way so it's not glaring at you if you notice this is my um five this is the normal mode it would go it went just a little bit too deep right here and that's what happens is it just tends to go just a little bit too deep. So if you need it to be precise and you don't want it to go too deep, if it's going to show on that fabric, then that's when you switch. Um, this one doesn't really show too badly, but it's when you start looking at it closely that you'll notice that it went a little bit too deep. It did not do that on the neoprene though. So uh, the thicker materials it does not tend to go it doesn't tend to be as big of a deal because it's thicker so it doesn't go in as far um well good i'm glad denise 
um, it, I'm telling you, the scan and cut is a, is a blast to play with. So today I'm going to show you a hot mess. Um, somebody sent me a design that they're working on. I don't have the original FCM file, so I don't know where they started from. But they took my advice on adding a point or two or, or it came in with a lot of points. I don't know. But this is a hot mess. And I'm going to show you what I personally would do and what I ended up doing for them. But there, the difference between the two is amazing. So let's go over here to RBES software. And then I'm going to show you another item that was asked last week. So y'all see that this gnome, the top of the hat looks pretty good. But when you start looking at this, this is one big old hot mess, right? So when you select it in your sequence view window and you go to your tools tab and you click on the edit shape tool, do you notice how there are a gazillion points here? I mean, there's more points than anybody would ever need. When I say add a point or two, this is not what I'm talking about. Um, let's go in and zoom in on this. And so this is what I did for them is I grabbed my edit shape tool and I started getting rid of these edit points. Um, I'll come back in and reshape a little bit as I need to. But the main thing is, you, this is the software is so confused on what direction it needs to go. It has absolutely no clue. So once you've gotten rid of some of those, you can come right mouse click and choose symmetrical or smooth. Either one of those will work to try to balance this out so that you don't have to make as many. So you see how it, my curve is go, going back to where it needs to be. And I might take this one and move it up there and go symmetrical again and kind of bend it down a little bit. But then let's come get rid of some more here. So we don't need this one. We don't need the, whoops. And if you happen to left mouse click outside, it's going to try to update everything. So it, and it takes it a few minutes to do it. Let's give it another second here. I am in BES4 with this one because this is where they were working on their design. Um, now, I personally would have drawn over this and just said, okay, I, I, I don't want to mess with this. I think I'll just make my own. And that's what I would have done. But how did those lines go there? I have... Let me undo what I just did. I must have clicked on something else. There is a reason to hide other things. Yeah, I moved his arm. So let me undo a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, and I evidently messed up an arm. Oh, well, we're going to hide that arm because I don't want to have to deal with it. And I'm going to hide that. We're going to hide a bunch of things here. We, we want to leave that one on. My computer is being slow now. Did I lock it? No. Let's hide that one. All right, show all. <laughs> Let's try this again. I want to hide this guy. Why are you not hiding? All right, there is a way around this. If life is not letting you play, we're going to say hide other. So it's going to hide everything besides the one that we're working with. Now I'm going to come back in here and zoom in. And let's see what else we can play with. Tools, edit shape. So this was where we were. This is where we left off. We're going to just kind of get rid of a bunch of these. And as you go around and do that, it takes quite a while to, to mess with this. You can, it will work itself out. But you're going to go all the way around and delete a ton of edit points. Now, what I personally would do um, is and you can see i've got the spinning all of those edit nodes it's trying to determine what angle it needs to do something in 
So that is what the problem is with this particular one is it just has no clue as to what it's doing. And you can see I didn't make it much better until I get all the way around it and get all of those nodes gone. We're not going to be able to do anything with it. Easiest way to do this one is to come in, grab your drawing tool. I'm going to do the Bezier tool and just draw around it. Actually, I'm going to start up here. And the reason I picked the Bezier tool is because it allows me to do curves and lines at the same time. If I click and drag, it gives a curve. If I simply click, it goes straight. But if I click and drag, you can see how I can get a curve there. And I would, I would draw around this design and actually just kind of start again here. Simply because there's way too much work in editing all of those nodes. And like I said, I don't know if the original FCM file came in with a gazillion of them or if they added them in. I just know that that is the problem with this one. And when you draw it yourself, you have control over how many you put in there. You don't generally need a ton. But you, you need them where you want them, to, where you want it to bend. And that's, that's really all what I would do. I'm sitting here and clicking and dragging. I know this is kind of like watching paint dry, but let's see if we can't get around this. I'm trying to go as fast as I can here, guys. Um, and I mean, you could use the line tool and hold the control key down when you want to make a curve. That is also an acceptable method of doing it. I just didn't want to switch back and forth between tools. Is being lazy today. So that clicking and dragging actually makes that curve happen. And I'm going to get around here. Let's see what else we've got. I'll come back and look at questions in just a minute, guys. I, I, this is as multitasking as I can do. <clears throat> One last line. There we go. Get up here. When we get to this curve, we are going to close our shape. Now we should be able to convert that to an applique. Let's get let's hide that original shape. It is there we go. Now we've converted to an applique. Let's change it to a blanket stitch and apply it. Much better. So that is, I mean, that's the solution. When you see long stitches like that, you come in, zoom in on it. That's where you've turned a sharp corner usually. Grab that edit shape tool, right mouse click and choose smooth. And then right mouse click and choose cusp. And then you can kind of turn it a little bit more of a gentle curve and then right mouse click away from the area. So now we don't have that big long point. And that's really all you have to do with all of them. Smooth, right mouse click, cusp. Take that, bend it in a little bit. Take that one, bend it in a little bit. Right mouse click away. And anywhere that you've got one that looks like that, that's what you do. And or you can just kind of smush them in. And I'm going to go ahead and fix this one while I'm at it. So if you don't want to deal with cusp, just pull both corners, both sides in. And if I choose symmetrical, they'll both come in at the same time. That looks pretty good. Let's right mouse click and see what we've got. So I'll accept for that one. What have I got on that one? There we go. I would do the same thing on this guy right here, but you get the concept. You get the idea there. It's just a matter of getting those to where they're not sharp turns, but too much of a good thing is never good. So edit nodes, although I said at, you may want to add a few here and there, 
you don't want to add a ton. So now if we get rid of, we have to turn them back on before we can get rid of them. So I'm going to show all. That's for some reason when we're doing this, it's not liking me to hide eyeballs when we're on the screen. There you go. So that's how I would fix it. But you could actually go in there and, and fix those edit nodes. I mean, delete all of them if you want to. Um, I had click press delete on my keyboard, Tracy, is what I've done. It's either the internet or slow computers. How do I know if my computer is slow? Well, I have a super duper computer. So um, it, when it's slow, when it's not doing what I want it to do fast, it's it's going slow. <clears throat> Hi, Leanne. Good to see you. It is afternoon here, but it is early morning there. How are you doing today? Okay, guys, so that was the first question that I had that came up today. And let me come back. Doesn't look like I had see any other questions here that I, that I can tell. Nope. Okay, so the other question came from last week. Um, yeah, the blanket stitch, the way they've got it set up, I didn't adjust how they set it up. They have their blanket stitch going for their hat going up over the top of the uh, uh, they're overlapping so i mean that's personal designers preference i did not adjust that i just went with what they went with so yeah that's they have it in 20. 260 days lot down <laughs> well you know we're finally traveling here again too so <laughs> Uh, 260 days of lockdown. I understand it's not great to go to your country right now to um, try to get in. You have to be quarantined in a quor special quarantine location. But I would want to move it up in the order of sewing that they had it initially. All right, good guys. So the other question I had was also in BES4. And somebody asked me about doing fitting text to a helmet. Okay. And when I found out what they wanted, this is kind of what I came up with. And so I'm going to show you how I wound up with this guy right here. Let's just touch new page. I went and found, I have an artwork service that I subscribed to. So I went and found myself a helmet. So I'm going to go import and I'm going to import my SVG helmet file that I found. Football helmet. There we are. So here's the SVG file that I started with. Now, I didn't size this to begin with, just so you know, but if you want to have your hoop or you can have your cutting mat on there, let's turn off our hoop, depending on what you're using. I'm assuming she is using um, a heat transfer vinyl or an adhesive vinyl. I truly don't know, but that's what I designed it for, okay? So I'm actually going to turn my cutting mat off and we will go from here. So what I did, that's just going to be my shape to be able to, to work with, okay? So we're going to come in and grab our text tool, and we're going to, you need Power Pack 2 to do this, okay? This is a true Power Pack item. So we're going to click on our normal text tool, and we're going to type in the word, oh, I forgot what my words were, um, hustle is the first one. So let's say we do capital H-U-S-T-L-E. And we're going to make it bigger. And we're going to bring it down here and put it in our helmet so we can start playing with it. So here's my hustle. Now, we want envelope text. Envelope text is what this one calls for. You can do double concave, but this one calls for a, I would say, a con convex top concave bottom, kind of or bridge. So we'll, let's start with bridge. To adjust this, we're going to click on the text tool so that we can see our adjustment handles. All right, so now, I, oops, I need to be back on my text tool. And I can come in and I can bring it down a little bit with the handle and then I can smush things down. If the more extreme you want it, you just kind of play with it here. I'm going to come and grab it and move it back up here. And I'm going to make it a little bit wider. Oops. If 
if you are wanting to stitch it, I'll we'll we'll talk stitches here in a minute because it can be done stitch version as well. It's just going to be more compact. And sometimes when you mess with letters this much, they don't stitch that pretty. Just so we know that. You could also come in and adjust this up if you want. You can adjust this down. And you can make it bigger still. So that's close to what we want. Let me take and move it just a little bit. And if you want to move uh, one individual letter, grab the square inside it and bring it in. So let's say I want to take that up and I want to take this one up. I'm just grabbing the squares inside them so that they touch up. A, and, and like I said, I'm going to turn off the helmet itself. But there we go. So the next word is what? Hit. Okay. So come in and pick a different font. Oh, we don't want to pick one until we actually click down here to start. Let's go hit. H. Oops. There we go. I was wondering why that was doing that. I evidently had cap locks on. So let's pick a different font. And I'm using my true type fonts because I have more selections. You can use artwork cut fonts if you want. Um, or you can use the art. You can use true types. Either one will work. I'm looking for kind of a chunky one this time. Let's see here. I could just go look at what I used, couldn't I? Because that would be easy enough to do. With Tino Black, maybe maybe what we want to go with this time. That's a chunky, but let's see what I used over here. I used Bell Weave. Okay. There's a reason I left that up there for myself. So we can come all the way up to the top. There it is. And apply. So this one. I went and I rotated it, I believe. I'm looking to see what I did. Oh, yes, there we go. Okay, so select, and this is going to be your pennant. So I did pennant right. The first thing I did was make it bigger. I want to make it bigger both ways. And then I want my hand, so I'm looking for my hand here so I can move the whole kit and caboodle in. I want to change my color. Make it a little bit, adjust it a little bit more. Let's see here. Let's stretch it. And I'm going to stretch it this way too. Oops. Okay, so now we've got hustle, hit, and then we want never quit. So there's hustle and hit. I need my E to be moved back in just a little bit there. All right, so never is our next word. And let's see here. Let me see what, what font I used because I did find one that had a little shadow to it. Casteller. There we go, right there. And this one is the pennant the other direction. So um, I'm gonna delete the little circle, we don't need it. And I'm gonna come back here and we're gonna grab envelope text and pennant the opposite direction. Let's rotate it a little bit. And now we need to be back on the text tool to be able to adjust it. So that's where I'm going to go with this one. We're going to kind of adjust it this way. And I'm going to adjust this way a little bit. 
and down this way a little bit. Up that way a little bit more. And let's stretch it out. So we're close. I think I want that one to be up a little bit. And let's give it a different color. So now we need quit. And what did I use for that one? Decorated. So it depends on what font you have on your computer. These were the ones that I found that was similar to what she wanted on my computer. There it is. Okay. And I do believe this one, I did another pennant. And whoop, is that the one the way I want? Yep, that is the way I want. So come back into my text tool. I took this down. I took this up. I made this one go up a little bit. Whoops. Go down just a hair. And let's take that and make it fat. So then pick your color. Pick a color, any color. Then I turned off the artwork. And I would normally delete it. So I deleted any artwork that I didn't want. So there's your helmet. Um, now, that is BES4 with Power Pack 2 doing it as artwork. So this would be cut out of either heat transfer vinyl or adhesive vinyl, the way that I just did it. <clears throat> if you wanted it to be an embroidery design, you would need to do a little bit different here in this one. Um, you would change it from artwork fonts. So I could still use the same fonts that I chose, but change them from artwork to a column. It's going to tell me I've got some satin stitches that are too long. So let's look at it in 3D mode. It's that jump stitch right there. So that wouldn't be a big deal. Let's grab this one and change it from artwork to column and I don't see any dropped stitches there either if you see drop stitches you'll want to change to a a fill and I'll show you how to do that in just a second column Ooh, it didn't like that one at all so that would be let's go select a different font because it does not like that one at all And that one can be used, but it needs to have a patterned fill. And it would need to be adjusted a little bit. So we'll make it just a little bit smaller both ways. Because it's a bigger, bigger font. And I'm guessing it's not going to like this guy right here. So, but we have one that's similar to that in our two color scripts. So let's see here what we have two color team medium. that's somewhat similar. So let's come and bring that down. There you go. I'm good with that one. Then if you want this to be an embroidery design. Okay, so undo. I want to undo what I just did. Um, this would be a, you could do convert to applique. And then right mouse click on it, preserve as stitches, and delete the first two pieces of the applique. You could do the same thing with this. Convert it to applique. Right mouse click on it and choose preserve as stitches. And then delete the first pieces of the applique in the sequence view window. Okay. Let me come back and see what we've got. What is the difference between BES4 and P-Design 11? The main differences are P-Design 11 is a true digitizing program. 
and BES4 is more of a customizing program. It does allow you to create appliques. It does have some specialized artwork tools in it that PE Design does not have. Um, so that is really the biggest difference between the two is one is a true digitizing program. The other is a customizing program. Um, BES4 has word collage in it. P Design does not. They have different tools and they have different uses. There are over 200 built-in fonts in BES4. There are 120 and they are not the same fonts in P Design plus 10 small fonts. They both have alpha mapping in them. I think it's called font mapping in, in P Design. So those are the main differences. There are power packs that can be added on to BES4. The first one was with nap control and a few others. The second one is all about artwork to use with your scan and cut. So with BES4, you can create rhinestone designs. If you don't have it on your Canvas workspace, you can do it in BES4. Um, it has the more advanced artwork tools that our Canvas workspace does not have and that um, PE Design simply does not have. So, I mean, it really depends on what you're wanting to do, what your end goal is. There are more advanced editing tools in PE Design than there are in BES. But, I mean, having said that, you can manipulate your way around quite a bit. Uh, let's see here. Oh, did you have... <laughs> So thanks, Karen. I'm so glad that you enjoyed that class last year. It was a fun class to teach. That was my first Zoom class. <laughs> the second one just about killed me. <laughs> Maybe that's why I haven't done it. Um, uh, so Delilah, um, get in there and play. I've got plenty of different videos on all of the different software programs over the past year and a half. If you go back and watch the lives, you'll find a lot of different stuff done that we've done it. Yes, I can show you how to use um, word collage in just a second. So for using purchased appliques, it doesn't matter either one. Um, or even just directly on your sewing machine. With BES, I have to choose the color applique material to get it to work with my scan and cut. With P Design, I need to divide by colors to get it to work with my scan and cut. So it really depends on which one you're most comfortable with. They will both do the exact same thing, Sharon. How did I use the column instead of standard when I changed from artwork? That one's easy enough to answer here. Right where I'm at it. So hold on just a second. Um, let's come back over here. When I selected this, do you see where it says style? I had artwork selected. All right. So artwork. Why did it not apply? Artwork. Apply. So artwork was selected. I changed it from artwork to column instead of standard. And apply. So that, that's where that change occurred. So now I'm going to come in and make it bigger again and get it back to where it was to begin with. Let's come back to our Tools tab and grab our Text tool and make this fit back in here a little bit better. If you get that message and you notice that there's something major wrong, then I would change it. But if there's not, if you don't see any missed stitches, then I wouldn't worry too much about it. I don't see anything majorly wrong with that one. Actually, I don't see anything wrong with it now, now that I've futzed around with it a little bit. Um, you, you just play with them, guys. Uh, you, you will hear me say that over and over and over again. You just play with it. And once you get in here and stop worrying about what can go wrong and start having fun, you, I think you will truly enjoy it. So on your tools tab, word collage, let's talk about that. Word collage is this guy right here. It's on your tools tab. When you select it, a sub menu comes up and you can select any of the shapes that are built in. I have power pack one and two added. And I'm trying to remember when I got the extra shapes. Did I get them in one or did I get them in two? 
Um, I think I got them in Power Pack 1, but it could have been Power Pack 2. Truly, I can't remember. But I can also bring in, let's see if I can find a pumpkin, um, my own shapes now. Power Pack 2 gave me the ability to bring in my own shape. So if I have an SVG or an FCM file, I can bring in my own shape. What it allows you to do is come in here and type in words. Um, give me another word, guys. That'll work. We'll just go with that. Um, you can select different font styles that you want to use. Let's just start with Drake and see what we've got. So I'm going to go ahead and touch generate. And it's going to generate randomly words in this pumpkin. Oh, acorn's a good one. Blessing's a good one as well. So let's go acorn here. I'm just going to add one more. <clears throat> and if you see something you like, you better click OK on it. I, if I think I might want to come back and look at it, I will highlight all the words and copy them so that they're sitting on my clipboard. Don't worry about the colors. Worry about the, the words. How Do you like how the word arrangement looks? Did it give you a nice random sprinkling of all the words? And when you find one that you like, click on it. I personally like to change to horizontal, vertical, and diagonal because I don't like my words going upside down. That's personal preference. However you like, there is no right or wrong to this. More, it, it, I just like it more structured than what was there. So I tend to do something like this. And I actually do like that arrangement right there. I think that's a pretty arrangement. I may need to have, let's see here, we've got fall, we've got cool, we've got leaves, we've got falling, we've got acorn, we've got pumpkin. It looks like we got every word that we wanted, so we're going to go ahead and click OK. If you wanted to have it ha be something besides a satin stitch, you can choose run, satin, or applique if you have all power packs installed. If you have art, you can use this in artwork mode if you wanted to as well, if you have power pack two. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And there we go. So now I'm going to come in and I'm going to change my colors. I want that to be orange. Wow, that was hard. If I forgot to do create an applique in the first section, I can hit applique. Now I've got that as an applique. Wasn't too hard to turn it into an applique now, was it? If you want some different colors, let's say we don't want all of those words to be that color. Um, I like that one orange, but let's see. That one's too close to the acorn to be orange, so I'm going to go ahead and change it to a green color. Um, this fall down here, I think I want it to be a purple color. Or maybe let's try a burgundy, if I can find a burgundy. That one's, that burn orange is kind of fun. And I may want to move it. I may decide, hey, it looks better down there. So let's give myself a few more colors in here. Let's give a few, that acorn, let's see here, that fall right there. Let's make it that green color that we selected. That falling, let's make that um, this yellow orange color. Actually, let's go with that one. So, but you see, you can play with it. And if you want to add a word, let's say I want to, put in my family name. I can come in and say, all right, let's put in Hogan's here. And I'm going to select a small font for Hogan's. So I'm going to come grab this, turn off my true type fonts, and I'm going to put on a font category filter here for a second and choose small fonts. So let's see here. It, that will only bring up my small, tiny fonts. So I'm going to go with little block and apply it. Oh, and guess what? Little block only has uppercase letters and characters. So let's go back and put that filter back on. And let's pick a different font style. Let's go with petite. There we go. 
So now I can come in and let's rotate this down in here. And what could I do to make it transform to be part of that stem? I'm going to change the color to green. But what did we just play with, guys? Text transformations. So I can come in here and I can actually make my own transformation. I'm going to move this with my hand. Where's the hand? There we go. I'm going to move it up like this a little bit. And I'm going to make my own transformation. Let's change this to all caps. Because we are trying to fit it into that space. Where's my cursor? There we go. And there you go. So that is one of the ways that you can adjust it. You can modify, have a word going around the and add designs to it to further customize it. So go in and look at your act. Wise that. Play and make it your own. So, um, I mean, really, the the limit to it, I, I consider it, the, when it's in the word collage menu, I consider it kind of a template, a starting point. Then what can I do with it? What can I make this? How can I make this more special than what the software automatically did for me? What the software did was great, but being able to expand on that is something that's a lot of fun as well. So, you know, that would be one of the things that I would say, go in there, play with it, let it do its thing. You do want to choose the size in the word collage menu before you start doing it. I let it go with the default size, but let's get hit new page here and I'll show you where to do that. Just so you don't forget under your tools, word collage. Once you've selected your shape. So if I come find that pumpkin again, we could have done a football. We could have done leaves. Um, there's my pumpkin. It was about six inches. Um, and I'm in metric and just, I, I know that 150 is six inches. So if you know you want it six inches wide, change it down to 150 millimeters and then start with your words. So remember I copied and pasted mine. We'll put football in here this time. I can type. And I mean, you could change your font. So not everything has to have the same font. You can have, um, you can play with it however much you want to. So if you have Power Pack 2, I believe it is, you get two font selections in this menu, but you can always change them when you're done. And remember, I like the horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. So I'll come in here and do that and see what we get but you will get a random generation of the words. So when you see one, I'm telling you, you better click on it because you may not see it again. It has a tendency to do its own thing. If you want it to give you more words, you can increase your max number of paths. That's how many times it can do something. Okay. I kind of like that one. I'm going to go ahead and click. Okay. But if you want a different font for the word football, click off of it, click on the word football and come pick a different font and apply it. You have control. You're not, you're not locked into what the software did for you. You can always change it. If I wanted instead of football there, I could put my, the family name right there. Because that's always a possibility. So if you wanted to put 2022 in there or 2021 in there after you're done, you could do that. So come and come and play with that one. That one's fun to do. All right. So I told you I would show you how I did the trim um, on these guys right here. So I'm going to flip over to my cameras. So I, I'm going to show you how I did this on the Luminaire. 
kind of software because it's built in software to the machine, right? So I'm going to flip cameras, grab a drink while I'm doing it. And I'm going to make you sick here for just a second. But I'm going to start with sending the trim over from the, from, um, the scan and cut machine. You all are lucky I did not turn anything off in between sessions. Usually I do, and today I did not. So let me come over and plop that back there. And let's pick camera number two. All right. And once again, I have lost my stylus. Hold on. I don't know what I did with it in between, so we got to have something. You don't have to, I do. So I'm going to touch my, the left side and go into my connection and touch send because I am sending to my luminaire. I'm going to go into pattern. These are the trims. And I selected this guy right here. And we're just going to set it and there's not enough space. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. It's got to stay within our hoop size. So there we go. That's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and touch transfer. And it's going to say, okay. And the reason it wouldn't let me do it is because I'm going to show you this right here. If you watched earlier today, this represents the 10 and 5 8 by 16 inch hoop. That's the largest hoop on the Luminaire. So that's as much space as you could get it. If I had this over here, you'll notice it gets grayed out. So it would not send. It has to stay in that white area. All right, let's flip back over to the Luminaire. I'll leave my pen there. So in case I have to come back. <clears throat> How did I do my trim? So I'm going to go home. And if you were watching earlier, I did finish our witch's hat. She got finished. So we're going to go ahead and touch my design center. The stamps shape key retrieve from scan and cut machine. And here's that trim that I selected, we're going to touch OK. And what I did was I took my eraser or actually you may find it easier to do this. You can do your multiple selection key, your selection key and grab your this one, which is draw your points, point to point selection. So you can come in. Oops. I want to back up because I clicked in the wrong spot there. I'm thinking my eraser is my better tool. And I know I didn't have this many, so I am going to take out some more. I'm going to chop off a little bit. I set up my hoop. It was a six by six. So I wanted to make sure that I stayed within those parameters. So that's 150 by 150, just so you know. And let's select that guy right there. And move him in. And I made him a little bit bigger. So I'm going to stretch him out. Too big. If you want him to have more of a steep look, you can stretch it. The line that I selected, I went into my line properties and into my motifs. And then I grabbed the select tool and I used this one right here. And I touched OK. I changed the color to green. I touched OK. Paint bucket is your flood fill tool. Touch the line. Now, I actually did a couple of these because I liked the layered look. So I actually went and transferred it over to the machine. But I first, before I did that, I actually added the rest of my design. So let me move this down towards the bottom. 
and I'm going to come in and add the rest of my design. Let's see if I have it in here. There's my leaves. All right. So I'm going to bring those in. And all I wanted was the leaves part of it. I didn't want the flower. So I'm going to do my multi the point to point selection and draw around my flower here. And cut that off the page. Now I can magic wand and grab this guy and bring him down. So I then blood filled that. It doesn't matter what color because I turned it into an applique. We're going to go ahead and touch next. Actually, I want to put this. Ooh, hello. We want to change that outline blood fill and I'm going to turn it off because we're not going to use it. We'll just tap that so it doesn't change it. And I'm going to put this in the memory so that when we come back, we can just grab the zigzagged part down at the bottom. So we're going to touch next. And touch set and touch OK. So I then went and added three more of those from my design center. So I came back in out of my memory pocket. Here's my flower. I'm going to go ahead and touch my point to point selection. Oop, wrong one, this one. And you may find it easier to do it if you're zoomed in. Now. Oh. Now I'm clear of the bottom. Close that shape in, cut it out. Next. Set it. And then I moved it down just a little bit. Not a lot. But I did do one last trick. My design center, I should have saved that last one. Oh, well. Not too hard to get rid of this. Let's erase this guy this time. Now he'll be easier to do point point selection. Okay. We can just grab it just like that right there. So my last line it's, it's ready to go. I'm going to put that in my memory just in case I want to use this again later. What I did with it was you can flip the direction. I flipped it to where it was going the opposite direction. And what will happen is the jagged lines will be facing down now. And I do believe I put them closer together. So I changed the spacing to where it was kind of overlapping on that bottom one so that it didn't have a big gap. I touched set. And let's move that one down. One last thing before we go to the applique part, I moved that one in the sewing order up to where the, I wanted it before this one. So I moved it up one. Yep. I want that one to go down. So my bottom fa facing one, why are you not letting me do that? Yeah, my bottom facing one, I want to be in the middle. There we go. So this one's facing the bottom, this one's facing top, this one's facing bottom, this one's facing up. And so it would be the last one and it just kind of gives it a layered look. So then to do my connection, oops, what did I hit? We're going to touch the applique badge. We want to have the right thing selected, which is this part. We want to do the applique badge, applique patch for selected colors, and I only want to do my red. Touch next. I used the light zigzag stitch and left everything at the defaults for my flower. Touch next. Touched OK. And that's it, guys. 
So it actually did the whole kit and caboodle all at one time. And then when I got to the part of my flower, then um, when I got to the part of, I guess I need to change cameras. When I got to the part of the flower, then I projected it down. I went back to zero and projected it down onto my project to where I could see what my center of my flower looked like. So, um, let's see here. What pen am I using? The stylus that I was using at the Luminaire was um, the one that comes with it. The pen that I was using on my scanning cut was a heat erasable pen that has a soft tip on the end of it, just simply because I don't know what I did with my stylus. So I just grabbed a pen with a soft, with a soft tip. It works just as well. I don't like using my fingers. So that's kind of the way, that's the way I think. Um, It does. Did you not see um, that hoop that I was using in my design center is showing you the actual space. And, um, and you can do the same thing. You choose it in your settings. You pick the hoop that you're planning on using in your settings key. So that, that's really, that gives you that space that you're designing for. Um, good, Judy. I'm glad you enjoyed it today. I, I really, I mean, guys, you know, I love software. I am the software geek. Okay. Um, there's not a piece of software out there that I don't enjoy laying my hands on besides maybe an illustrator. Um, but it's, I, I find it intriguing. Having said that, I am so excited what I, to what I can actually do directly on the machine without having to go to software that, um, really is quite cool. And if you didn't know what we did this morning, if you want to go back and look, this is kind of what we played with, except for we made a miniature version of it. But we went through all of the different tools of, you know, all of the different ways that you can create an applique in um, the Luminaire. So, and my, I, like I said, one of my favorites is this light zigzag stitch. I truly do like it. It reminds me of um, you know, the college appliques, uh, tw tackle twill applique. It reminds me of that stitch. So I truly do enjoy that. And I think you all will have fun playing with that. It's it just kind of, and the fact that you don't have to resize anything, that when I send it back over to my scan and cut, the piece will cut the perfect size that I want it to cut. Yeah, I get a lot of questions about, okay, you send it to the machine and you're sending it back from the machine. Why would you do both? I like to make sure that my applique is the actual size of what I've got. And when software generates something, it may go a little bit larger or a little bit smaller. So that's why I transfer it back to my scan and cut to cut. That's really one of the main things, reasons I do it. Even if I bring an FCM file into my software program, I always do, a, I always send the FCM file from the file that I've created back to the scan and cut machine so that I know that the, that piece is going to be perfect. I'm not sure what you're asking, Denise. You'll have to kind of give me, send me an email on that one um, and show me a picture of what you're, take a screenshot of what you're talking about. I'm not real sure what you're asking me. <laughs> you're most welcome, Patty. So th this morning, this morning I did show the more manual way of doing the applique directly on the machine. And that actually is a lesson in your scan and cut playbook. So if you have the scan and cut playbook, that um, there is a lesson on how to create a teacup applique that goes through all of the steps that I did this morning that that will actually take you, show you through it. If I create it on my Luminaire or in my PE Design 11 software, I never increase the size. It is perfect. If I create it someplace, if I do BES, I will do a different little trick, Donna. Um, so let's say we converted this to an outline or to an applique. 
So there we are. I'm going to change the covering stitch to a color to the color orange. Now let's look at this. And you'll notice that my placement stitch is right down the middle. So what I tend to do instead of increasing the size of my applique, I change where my placement offset is. So the inset percentage, basically, I increase that number to about 85 percent, 75 to 85 percent. Uh, and you'll notice how it pushes that to the outer edge. And then I'll change my tack down stitch. I like my tack down stitch further in because usually I have heat applied material. And if I want a tack down stitch, I actually want that heat applied material getting caught. After I've done that, then I'll make sure that everything is still in a good position. I've got a lot of acorns right there at the same spot. Let's move those around. Let's see if we can't put a fall right there instead. Or I should have put leaves, actually, and put my acorn down here. That makes a bit more sense. So if you if you notice that something is not where you think you, it should be, go ahead and just change it. If you get too many words right together. But that's that right there changes the applique. What I just did, that changing that inset percentage to 85 knocks that line towards the outer edge so that when we go and go to our tools tab and press the scan and cut key, that our applique piece will be the exact size that we need it. So I'm going to go and copy this and go back over here and let you see if I paste it down on top of it, how well it goes right to the edge. Let's see, see how that is right close to the edge. And that's, that's my preference. That way it's far enough out, but it's not extending. And that way I don't have to worry about how many millimeters I need to get something going. Um, Uh, so I rarely increase size on, I rarely do an offset on the scan and cut machine. And the reason I say that is because like with a letter, if you have an outside and an inside, you have two, two different offsets. The, uh, if you're just increasing that size of that letter or increasing the offset for that letter goes to the outside, your inside gets bigger too. And that's not optimal. So you want to make sure that your outside and your inside can go together and play nice with each other. It's because just making an A bigger, it expands the interior of that A so that your covering stitch is in here and you're let your you're gapping. So that's why I tend to try to do the change the offset percentage in my software. Um, and truly, that's that is one of the keys. Okay. So yeah, Leanne, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a software queen. What can I say? A software collecting queen. It's just a thing. There's, I go to the fastest place that it's going to be to be able to achieve that result. So today when we were making the helmet, that was easiest done in BES4 with my artwork tools if I was playing with artwork. Um, so all right, guys, if you have questions, let me know. Why do I have, Tracy, why did I make you angry today? Or did you just happen to accidentally hit the angry button? Um, I hope you all enjoyed today. I, both days were good. I am out of town for the rest of the week. So I will see you next Tuesday before I head to Houston. So if you don't have questions next week, we're going to have a problem. Because I, my mind is going to be on packing for Houston. I get home Sunday night and I'm turning around to pack for Houston next week. I hope to be able to see some of you there in person. It'll be nice for a change. Um, but I, I'm headed to see my dad this week. It's His birthday is next week here in Houston. So it's time for me to go visit. So you guys have a great <laughs> Okay, good, Tracy. Just so long as I didn't make you mad today. I, I was trying to wonder if I, if I could have, but, you know, you never know. Um, Y'all have a great rest of the week. Have a great day and be sure and send in questions so that I have something to talk about for with you next week. You know that I answer them as evidence today. So have a great one. Bye bye.